We continue on today with chapter 13, The Two Emotions. I have said you have but two emotions, love and fear. One is changeless, but continually exchanged, being offered by the Eternal to the Eternal. In this exchange it is extended, for it is increases as it is given. The other has many forms, for the content of individual illusions differs greatly. Yet, they have one thing in common. They are all insane. They are made of sights that are not seen, and sounds that are not heard. They make up a private world that cannot be shared for they are meaningful only to their Maker, and so they have no meaning at all. In this world their Maker moves alone, for only He perceives them. Each one peoples his world with figures from his individual past, and it is because of this that private worlds do differ. Yet the figures that he sees were never real, for they are made up only of his reactions to his brothers, and do not include their reactions to him. Therefore he does not see he made them, and that they are not whole. For these figures have no witnesses, being perceived in one separate mind only. It is through these strange and shadowy figures that the insane relate to their insane world. For they see only those who remind them of these images, and it is to them that they relate. Thus do they communicate with those who are not there, and it is they who answer them. And no one hears their answer save him who called upon them and he alone believes they answered him. Projection makes perception, and you cannot see beyond it. Again and again have you attacked your brother, because you saw in him a shadow figure in your private world. And thus it is you must attack yourself first, for what you attack is not in others. Its only reality is in your own mind, and by attacking others, you are literally attacking what is not there. The delusional can be very destructive, for they do not recognize they have condemned themselves. They do not wish to die, yet they will not let condemnation go. And so they separate into their private worlds, where everything is disordered, and where what is within appears to be without. Yet what is within they do not see, for the reality of their brothers they cannot recognize. You have but two emotions, yet in your private world you react to each of them as though it were the other. For love cannot abide in a world apart, where when it comes it is not recognized. If you see your own hatred as your brother, you are not seeing him. Everyone draws nigh unto what he loves, and recoils from what he fears. And you react with fear to love, and draw away from it. Yet fear attracts you, and believing it is love, you will call it to yourself. Your private world is filled with figures of fear you have invited into it, and all the love your brothers offer you, you do not see. As you look with open eyes upon your world, it must occur to you that you have withdrawn into insanity. You see what is not there, and you hear what makes no sound. Your manifestations of emotions are the opposite of what the emotions are. You communicate with no one, and you are as isolated from reality as if you were alone in all the universe. 
In your madness you overlook reality completely and you see only your own split mind everywhere you look. God calls you and you do not hear, for you are preoccupied with your own voice. And the vision of Christ is not in your sight, for you look upon yourself alone. Little child, would you offer this to your father? For if you offer it to yourself, you are offering it to him. And he will not return it, for it is unworthy of you, because it is unworthy of him. Yet he would release you from it and set you free. His sane answer tells you what you have offered yourself is not true, but his offering to you has never changed. You who know not what you do can learn what insanity is and look beyond it. It has given you to learn how to deny insanity and come forth from your private world in peace. You will see all that you denied in your brothers because you denied it in yourself. For you will love them, and by drawing nigh unto them, you will draw them to yourself, perceiving them as witnesses to the reality you share with God. I am with them as I am with you, and we will draw them from their private worlds, for as we are united, so would we unite with them. The Father welcomes all of us in gladness, and gladness is what we should offer Him. For every Son of God is given you to whom God gave Himself, and it is God whom you must offer to them to recognize His gift to you. Vision depends on light. You cannot see in darkness. Yet in darkness, in the private world of sleep, you see in dreams although your eyes are closed. And it is here that what you see you made. But let the darkness go, and all you made you will no longer see. For sight of it depends upon denying vision. Yet from denying vision it does not follow, you cannot see. But this is what denial does, for by it you accept insanity, believing you can make a private world and rule your own perception. Yet for this light must be excluded. Dreams disappear when light has come and you can see. Do not seek vision through your eyes, for you made your way of seeing that you might see in darkness, and in this you are deceived. Beyond this darkness, and yet still within you, is the vision of Christ, who looks on all in light. Your, quote, vision comes from fear, is his from love, and he sees for you as your witness to the real world. He is the Holy Spirit's manifestation, looking always on the real world and calling forth its witnesses and drawing them to you. He loves what he sees within you, and he would extend it. And he will not return unto the Father until he has extended your perception even unto him, and their perception is no more for he has returned you to the Father with him. You have but two emotions, and one you made, and one was given you. Each is a way of seeing, and different worlds arise from their different sights. See through the vision that is given you, for through Christ's vision he beholds himself, and seeing what he is, he knows his Father. Beyond your darkest dreams, he sees God's guiltlessness, Son, within you, shining in perfect radiance that is undimmed by your dreams. And this you will see as you look with him, 
for his vision is his gift of love to you, given him of the Father for you. The Holy Spirit is the light in which Christ stands revealed, and all who would behold him can see him, for they have asked for light. Nor will they see him alone, for he is no more alone than they are. Because they saw the Son, they have risen in Him to the Father. And all this will they understand, because they looked within and saw beyond the darkness the Christ in them, and recognized Him. In the sanity of His vision they looked upon themselves with love, seeing themselves as the Holy Spirit sees them. And with this vision of the truth in them came all the beauty of the world to shine upon them. And from the workbook Lesson 98 I will accept my part in God's plan for salvation. Today is a day of special dedication. We take a stand on but one side today. We side with truth and let illusions go. We will not vacillate between the two, but take a firm position with the one. We dedicate ourselves to truth today and to salvation as God planned it be. We will not argue it is something else. We will not seek for it where it is not. In gladness we accept it as it is and take the part assigned to us by God. How happy to be certain all our doubts we lay aside today and take our stand with certainty of purpose and with thanks that doubt is gone and surety has come. We have fulfilled a mighty purpose and have been given everything we need with which to reach the goal. Not one mistake stands in our way, for we have been absolved from errors. All our sins are washed away by realizing they were but mistakes. The guiltless have no fear, for they are safe and recognize their safety. They do not appeal to magic, nor invent escapes from fancied threats without reality. They rest in quiet certainty that they will do what is given them to do. They do not doubt their own ability because they know their function will be fulfilled completely in the perfect time and place. They took the stand which we will take today, that we may share their certainty and thus increase it by accepting it ourselves. They will be with us all who took the stand we take today will gladly offer us all that they learned and every gain they made. Those still uncertain too will join us and barring our certainty will make it stronger still. While those as yet unborn will hear the call we heard and answer it when they have come to make their choice again. We do not choose but for ourselves today. 
Is it not worth five minutes of your time each hour to be able to accept the happiness that God has given you? Is it not worth five minutes hourly to recognize your special function here? Is not five minutes but a small request to make in terms of gaining a reward so great it has no measure? You have made a thousand losing bargains, at the least. Here is an offer guaranteeing you your full release from pain of every kind and joy the world does not contain. You can exchange a little of your time for peace of mind and certainty of purpose with the promise of complete success. And since time has no meaning, you are being asked for nothing in return for everything. Here is a bargain that you cannot lose. And what you gain is limitless indeed. Each hour today give him your tiny gift of but five minutes. He will give the words you use in practicing today's idea the deep conviction and the certainty you lack. His words will join with yours and make each repetition of today's idea a total dedication made in faith as perfect and as sure as His in you. His confidence in you will bring the light to all the words you say and you will go beyond their sound to what they really mean. Today you practice with Him as you say, I will accept my part in God's plan for salvation. In each five minutes that you spend with Him, He will accept your words and give them back to you, all bright with faith and confidence so strong and steady, they will light the world with hope and gladness. Do not lose one chance to be the glad receiver of His gifts that you may give them to the world today. Give him the words and he will do the rest. He will enable you to understand your special function. He will open up the way to happiness and peace and trust will be his gifts. His answer to your words. He will respond with all his faith and joy and certainty that what you say is true and you will have conviction then of him who knows the function that you have on earth as well as heaven. He will be with you each practice period you share with him exchanging every instant of the time you offer him for timelessness and peace. Throughout the hour, let your time be spent in happy preparation for the next five minutes you will spend again with Him. Repeat today's idea while you wait for the glad time to come to you again. Repeat it often and do not forget each time you do so. You have let your mind be readied for the happy time to come. And when the hour goes, and he is there once more to spend a little time with you, be thankful and lay down all earthly tasks, all little thoughts and limited ideas, and spend a happy time again with him. Tell him once more that you accept the part that he would have you take and help you fill, and he will make sure you want this choice which he has made with you and you with him. I will accept my part in God's plan for salvation. Today we open to simplicity, recognizing there are but two emotions, 
the changelessness of love, eternal, infinite, always and forever. And a make-believe emotion of fear, guilt, pain and shame. Today we recognize that this is our decision. Right now we decide for love. Releasing the potential choice of fear. Seeing that fear was never really an option. It is impossible to go against God's will for perfect happiness. Through the filter of the ego, the world has peopled with many forms, many persons, many sights, many sounds. They all have one thing in common. They are all insane. The content of individual illusions differs greatly, but they are all insane. The world of images, the linear cosmos of time and space, is made of sights that are not seen and sounds that are not heard. They make up a private world that cannot be shared. They are meaningful only to their maker, the ego. And so they have no meaning at all. Only the ego perceives a fragmented world. Only the ego feels fear. But you are not the ego. And what is nothing cannot feel. What is nothing has no dynamics. What is nothing has no existence. The figures that are perceived were never real. They are the past, and the past is not real. These shadowy figures are made up only of past reactions. But with this trick, the mind of sleep does not see it made them. It is through these strange and shadowy figures that the insane relate to their insane world. For they see only those who remind them of these images, and it is to them that they relate. Thus do they communicate with those who are not there, and it is they who answer them. And no one hears their answer save him who called upon them, and he alone believes they answered him. All this is but a teaching in projection. Projection makes perception, and you cannot see beyond it. When the mind asleep believes in attack, it perceives a world of attack, a world of defense. Yet by attacking others, you are literally attacking what is not there. Today we see that there are but two emotions and two ways of looking upon the world. 
today we would release all insanity, all attempts to meaningfully interpret the world of images. We look upon these images and say, I do not know what anything is for. I do not perceive my own best interest. I see nothing as it is now. Without the vision of Christ, I am seeing nothing. Only the vision will take me into the present moment, experience of total perception and beyond to the vision of Christ. Through Christ's vision I behold myself as God created me. Today I would let my identity be revealed to me. Today I will accept my part in God's plan for salvation. We dedicate ourselves to truth today and to salvation as God planned it to be. We will not argue it is something else. We will not seek for it where it is not. In gladness we accept it as it is and take the part assigned to us by God. In certainty, in sureness, in a state of complete non-compromise, I will accept my part in God's plan for salvation. Amen.